Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of Python interview question for DevOps. And as you can see on my screen, today is day fifth. And today we are taking one very interesting turn in uh, in this video that we are going to solve one hacker rank problem. It is kind of an easy thing, but you need to need to know the basics in order to resolve that. So the first question that we are going to take is hacker rank problem of concatenation and typecasting. So what we are going to do is we are going to take an input. We are going to typecast it into string and then we are going to concatenate it. How we do it, we'll see in the program. And then the second program is very, very much asked in, in the interviews that can you find a program is a leap year uh, in a program in which you can find whether it's a leap year or not. So you have to take an input from the user and then find out whether it's a leap year or not. In order to understand, we need to know the conditions of a leap year. So let us understand the conditions. So what exactly is a leap year? So if you can see on my screen, here are the rules that you need to understand for a leap year. So a leap year may be a leap year if it is evenly divisible by four. So if you if it is evenly divisible by four, then it can be a leap year. But there are other conditions as well. So there are total three conditions. This is the first condition. And then second condition is years that are divisible by hundred century years such as 1900 or 2000 cannot be leap year unless they are also divisible by 400. So this is second and the third condition. So second condition is years that are divisible by hundred. And then unless they are divisible by 400, they cannot be a leap year. So for this reason, 1700, 1800, 1900 were not leap years, but 1600 and 2000 were because they are divisible by 100 and they are divisible by 2000 as well. So these are the conditions for a leap year. So we are going to understand. So uh, if uh, if you are new over here, I would like to request that if you have not subscribed my channel yet, kindly do so. So without further ado, let's dive right into the demo part. Okay. So if you can see on my screen that I have already opened hacker rank over here and there is one problem and I'll be using Python 3 over here and this is uh, coming by default. So do not have to worry about it. And this is the problem statement. Okay, so let us read about the problem statement first. It is saying the included code stub will read integer from n. So this will read the integer, which is not a problem from standard input output without using any string method. So we do not have to use any string method. Try to print the following one, two, three till n. So this is dot 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 represent the consecutive values in between. For example, if we if we give a value of six, so it should print one, two, three, four, five, six. And then if we give a value of four, then it will print one, two, three, four. And they have given an example like for five, one, two, three, four, five. So this dot dot is the consecutive values in between. So do not get confused. So what is the input format? Input format could be n. All right. So uh, they have given the constraint. The value should be 1 and 150. So you have to enter the value between 1 and 150. So that's we are going to test today. So sample input is 3 and 1 to 3 should be the result. OK, so uh, just try to understand it that we are giving an input as an integer. But this this is some kind of string because the we have to concatenate over here. So let us write the program. So what we will do first of all, what we have to do, we have to run a for loop okay so for loop and uh, in this for loop what we'll do is okay for let me remove this for i in range i'm going to run it from 1 to uh, let's run it to till the n okay so it's the n and then semicolon over here and after that we have to take something known as result. We will we'll print the result and result equal to result plus we have to take the value which is coming from i. But you already know that this i value is coming from here, which is a number. OK, and this n is an input, so it would be a number because it is going to read the value. So we have to typecast it. So we have to give str over here and then We'll do this and we have not defined this result anywhere. So let us define this result and uh, equal to we are going to a blank value because it's a string and then we are going to do it. I think that should be it and then we are going to print it. OK, so print what should we print? We'll print the result and let us run the code and test it. So if I just run the code, what happens? It is processing. It is saying the answer is wrong. The input is three and you are printing one and two. Why? So my code is running from one till n. So what I have to do, I have to run it till the digit itself. So what I'll do is I'll give n plus one over here and then I think it should run. 
All right, let me run the code. Let's see the answer is, and you can see that the answer is perfect. Now, what is happening? If I would, wouldn't have given this a string, I would, wouldn't have concatenated given the value i, it would have treated it as an integer. So if I run it, it will fail. So see, it is say, saying trace back most written, recent calls last, this and this, this and this can only concatenate string, not end to string. So that's why we have to typecast it and we have to take a string value over here. All right. And this is because we have to have an empty string in order to address that. Okay. So this is a very basic example of, uh, of how to solve things on HackerRank. So you can create account, you can resolve the problems. It's, it contains a lot of things, Java. Uh, it contains a problem related to uh, C Sharp and uh, Python as well. Okay. So this is how you can resolve it. So I've written a better program for this, if you can see on my screen. So this is what I have written over here, uh, concatenate string. I have given a function over here and then I'm calling it from here and then I'm running. So if I clear the screen and run it again, let me give a value 10. It'll print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So what we are doing, exactly same thing we are doing over here is just we are beautifying the code. We are giving a value over here. Uh, accepting the value over here and then printing the value and then calling the function from here. This is the driver code itself and then call goes here, takes an input result and then same thing and then it's going to concatenate it. So uh, I hope you guys have understood this part. So let's dive right into the second program which is a leap year. Now this is a basic program which is asked but it confuses a lot of people. So if you uh, if you remember we, there were the con conditions that we talked about, right? So let me just open that leap year. Okay, this was the condition that I was talking about. So a leap year maybe have evenly divisible by four. So if I am talking about evenly divisible by four, you can see that it is divisible by four. Yes, but it is saying years that are divisible by 100 century years such as 1900 200 cannot be leap years unless they are also divisible by 14. It means two conditions at has to be fulfilled. So this two condition has to be fulfilled over here. All right. So what are, what are we doing? Let's start from the very basic. We are taking air as a, a variable and then we are taking a value from, from the, from the user. Okay. Now, uh, you can add something if you want, you can, uh, like enter the air to check. You can type over here, just save it. And whatever value comes over here, it's going to go to air and then we are going to make a call and then we are going to go over here. Okay. Once it goes over here, the value will, uh, the air value will come over here. It will first check air. This percentile is used for the remainder. So this is not division. This is remain uh, used for the remainder modulo, or you can say it. So if the air is divisible by 400, okay, then we have to check whether it's divisible by hundred or not. And then after that, we have to check whether it is divisible by four or not. So these are the three conditions that we have to check. If yes, then it should return true. Otherwise it should return false. Okay. So this thing should be, uh, you already know that in, in case of Boolean, it returns a value of zero and one, sorry, uh, true and false, which is we are going to over here. But whenever the condition comes over here, it's either zero or one. Okay. So one being, the true part and zero being the negative part or the false part. So let's test this program. So if I'll do CLS over here and what my, what is my program name? Zero to hit tab leap year, enter the air to check 1992. 1992 is true and which means it's a leap year. So it is going to return this value, which means it is the leap year. So if you want to add, you can add stuff over here. Uh, if, if you want to write something you can you can write it, it's 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 totally upon you okay let us test one more here so let's test about 1900 okay so one nine double zero false 1900 is not why because the condition here 400 what is this condition 400 over here now in this 1900 for is it divisible by 400 so sorry modulus by uh, 400 it'll give a value 300, which is not equal to this. So this would be, this would become 
false over here okay and then here it will become true and then here it will become false so consider a scenario let me let me explain you like this in the uh, in the condition of first condition okay first condition what will happen so if i give 1900 over here so this part what will happen this will become false okay in the second what will happen 100 this will become true and this is the case for 1900 okay so as an input is 1900 over here in the case in the third case what will happen over here is it divisible yes so this will become true so I made a mistake over here this should not be true this should be false I'll tell you why because when 1900 comes over here if you divide 1900 by 100 sorry modulus operator by 100 it will leave zero it won't leave any remainder so this condition becomes false because this is not equal to equal to this is does not equal to so this will become false now start comparing the condition over here so this condition is true which is perfectly fine this condition is false now what we know about and operator that both of the condition has to be what what both has to be false or both has to be true both has to be same if yes then only it will move forward and in terms of or what we need that either of this condition should be true so let's see how this works now this condition 400 is divide uh, do we do we leave uh, any any remainder over here yes the remainder would be 300 so this will become false okay so false or false and air divided by 4 which is true so what is happening over here this is true this is false so the control comes from left sorry right to left it won't go like this from right to left it will go like this so let us match a condition and between these two conditions is false and true so it will become false so this collective thing will become false and this will also become false because this is already false so if everything is false over here it won't reach true it will just skip it and else and it will return false so that's why the answer is false over here now let's let us understand again the condition of 1992 why it returned true so in the first case what will happen will it leave zero this is false right because 1992 if you divided 1992 by 400 it will leave somewhere around 392 okay which is not equal to zero so this would be false in the next scenario what will happen if you divide by 100 it will leave again 92 which is not equal to zero which is true so this will become true and in the last condition if you will divide by 4 will it leave zero yes it will leave zero so this becomes true okay now what happens over here true and true the control goes from right to left pay attention not right from not left to right it will go from right to left this is true this is true so true and true becomes true so now this whole condition will become true and then this is false so inside this condition inside this or what happens is you have to take one of the conditions so either of the condition if it's true then it will become true so this whole has become true this two and then this is false and false and true would be true so that's why it will return true this can sound a bit intimidating right now because uh, this is this is basic logical uh, logical thing that you need to understand in order to resolve this program you need to understand why it is happening over here, where the control goes and from where it is trying to calculate so uh, if you have any problem feel free to comment below and we will address that and i would like to suggest that go through the videos that i have created for python programming in which we have i have created this model your operators different type of operators comparative operators and how to use or where to use and how to match the situation how to match the situation over here 
where the control goes and then you will understand it okay so thanks guys uh, if there is an issue feel free to comment below if you have not understood anything feel free to comment below again we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one